What's up guys, my name is Julie and this is The Curated Curvy where I bring you along for the journey as I attempt to create the curated wardrobe of my dreams with these two hands and today I have for you all a January and February recent mix video. Let's get into it. Editing Julie here. So if you see the video, this side of my hair is looking really gray and really dusty and it is because the day before I did put gel in my hair and unbeknownst to me within 24 hours it would turn into that grayish disaster mess of a thing. But the video is already recorded and I do not want to re-record it so yes that is what it is it is obvious it is annoying i apologize so i usually try to do my month in my month of sewing review once a month but that didn't really happen um this past month and not because i was like incredibly busy or anything like i usually am I don't know what I was doing y'all. It's just the month came and went and no video went up. So we're gonna combine the January and February mix video into one for you guys starting now. So I was a wee bit productive for the past two months. Everything on the rack behind me is all the things that I made with the exception of the last three things right here. And those things were alterations. I do have one video up on alterations which I will link in the cards for you above. And then the last thing that I kind of altered I didn't record but I still want to share it with you all because it was it was like you know a little bit sewing related for this month I feel like I'm rambling let's get into it all right so some I don't I'm not gonna go in the month or I'm not going to go through the rack in like monthly order but I'll tell you which month each thing was made so the first one is the no me um I think it is 2003 I will pop the correct obviously pattern envelope up on the screen for you and this is the skirt from that pattern this was the pattern that was designed by Alyssa Threads for their first release. Um, I can't remember which season it was, but it was that first release. It is a really simple, really satisfying, really easy make. Um, I was able to make this in a few hours. The only problem that I had, and it could be a problem of my own, is that on the pattern envelope, the skirt seemed as though it was a little bit more form-fitting than the way that it was coming out on me. So I ended up having to go back a few times and take out more of the side seams and then ultimately ultimately tweak the pattern to fit to get it to fit me the way that I wanted it to fit me. Now again in terms of patterns it really is a really simple pattern to put together. It is actually just three panels so there's your center panel and your side panels and then um, your waistband pieces. The center panel and the side panels are the same for the front and the back of the skirt which makes it pretty easy and then the slit is just a slit that naturally occurs coming down from this panel here so you just don't close it and then you hem it. So that was all really really easy. I did take up a little bit of a deeper hem than the pattern called for just because I wanted this to be a mini skirt and I think the pattern calls for like one and a half inches um a one and a half inch piece of elastic for your waistband I went ahead and I used a two inch piece of elastic because that is the waist um the waistband width that I prefer for elastic when I am sewing now to go with this pattern I went ahead and I made a cardigan let me grab that so as I mentioned to go with this pattern I went ahead and I made a matching cardigan now I could literally kick myself right now because this pattern comes with a cardigan and I didn't use it because I felt like oh well I have my tried and true simplicity cardigan pattern that I will make and so I made that one instead and I have regrets so um first things first I think this fabric is too thick for that cardigan pattern and the neckband on that cardigan pattern is also a little bit funky before we get into that let's talk about the modifications I suppose that I made for the pattern so for this one I did go ahead and I cropped it and I cropped it quite significantly and then I took in the size on the actual pattern piece I think I only cut out like a size large but I had to go back in as you can see here I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I had to go back in and take in even more from the side seam because it was still fitting me just too big. Also, the way that it falls, the way that it's cut is a little bit weird. It almost wants to hang lower in the front than in the back, so I didn't like that. When it came time to put the neckband on, my neckband wasn't fitting, which could be a fault of my own. I probably cut it on the wrong green line because I've made this pattern before and I've never had an issue with the neckband not fitting before. So I did have to take in a little pleat back here in the back. And after all of that, I got the buttons on. I put on the um, button placket, which I think I did pretty good with. And then I put the buttons on and I decided to go with these three buttons. Each of these buttons in my stash only came in a pack of two. So I felt like it would be really fun to do like that cute little button detail there um, and just mix them up. And I absolutely love that idea, but I don't like this and I haven't worn it at all. The neckband does not sit flat on me. It kind of juts out around my neck and it's just not a flattering look at all. And I 
I remember like I know I've made this pattern multiple times in the past and because I've always used a thinner fabric even though I noticed that the neckband didn't lay flat it didn't bother me as much it was just kind of something that I was willing to live with because it wasn't that notable noticeable whereas with this one it is very noticeable and I don't like it so I don't wear this I think I'm going to take the buttons off of this and go ahead and donate it next I made a uh, what do you call this like a tweak or a hack of McCall's 7981 absolutely love that pattern I think I've only actually sewn it twice but in my mind it's like a tried and true pattern so this is the hack this was inspired by a low floor Randall skirt that I saw for sale on their website that was going for $250 for a mini skirt. I figured why buy it when you can DIY it, check out the video. I will also have that linked in the cards for you. And so I went ahead and I DIY'd it. Um, the low floor Randall skirt doesn't have a button placket down the front, but I kept the button placket because that just came with the skirt and I'm fine with the button placket with this skirt as it is. I did take some length off of it because this skirt does not come in like a true um, mini skirt style. It is more like a midi length and then like a right above the knee length. And so I did shorten it, I think about by three or four inches to get it to be a mini skirt and then I drafted and added these giant amazing ruffle patch pockets on it and I absolutely adore this skirt. The construction of the skirt is insanely easy and for me it's one of those things that I keep going back to just because I know how easy it is and how much of a satisfying make it is and even though I made it in the winter for like warmer weather it's kind of like made from this really thin cord. This will go well into the spring and I could probably even get away with it in the summer kind of like you know that jean skirt idea. All right in January I also made these two giant cozy sweaters. These are um a simplicity out of print pattern as I mentioned in the video when I talked about this in one of my Friday shows you can still pick this pattern up from Joann's I did find it in their powder drawers but I know that it is no longer listed on the simplicity website which tells me that they are probably not printing this pattern anymore but I made two versions of these sweaters I just wanted something that was giant and cozy and warm and snuggly because January was really 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 cold and like I said I just wanted to have a big comfy cozy pullover sweater and this was absolutely Absolutely perfect these patterns come together so easily um, it is just about four pieces I want to say the front the back the sleeve and the roll neck that is it all of it can be done on the serger with the exception of hemming it and for hemming it I think I just surged it and then folded it up once and stitch and top stitched that down on both of them and they have held up absolutely beautifully this is from a Chanel fabric that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and this is a cable knit like fabric that I picked up from Joann's. As I stated before in the last video, I wear these sweaters a lot. I actually, before I started recording this video, had this one on. I usually will just throw it on as soon as I get up in the morning with a pair of fuzzy socks and it just keeps me warm and cozy in my house for the better part of the day. But this was a self-drafted top that I made in the month of January. It's really cute. It was from a vintage bed sheet. It has giant puffy sleeves. It has a little tear on the bottom. The back is completely open and then it is closed with these two ties that you tie up back here. What we concluded in the last video was um, one of two things. I can either put a tie across here to make the shoulder stay up or on the inside someone gave a brilliant idea of like putting a snap system that would basically clasp around my bra strap or around whoever's wearing it bra strap on the inside of this garment so that's another idea that I want to explore. Unfortunately I have not gotten back to this and we are basically walking into spring at this point so I need to revisit it but it's just super cute tie back giant puffy sleeve peplum top absolutely adore this one and like I said before this was a self-drafted pattern. This is the last thing from January on my rack and it was this vest um I still don't like it I didn't like it in the Friday shows when I talked about it I didn't like it on Instagram when I made it here we are going into March and I still don't like it and I haven't worn it which means that this is destined for the thrift store at this point so I will go ahead and I will tag it so that it has um its size indication on it and I will put this in the to donate pile there's nothing really wrong with a pattern ultimately I'm glad that I tried this style it was me going outside of my comfort zone and trying something new but this just really isn't for me and it is like I said before at the end of this video going into the donation pile. All right now we get into February. February there, there were some highs and there were some lows. <laughs> some high highs and some low lows. In February I made some really cool things and I had some really big fails. 
I guess that's just how it goes. You know, not everything is going to be a success. I want everything to be a success. I would love to venture into every program project feeling like it is going to be a success, but that's just not reality. So let's get into it. All right. The first thing I finished my no me 2001 coat. Ah, guys, I love this coat. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love this coat. I am ecstatic with it. This is my first time ever sewing a lined coat. It's not tailored because it's not fitted to me, but still this is just like such a massive accomplishment and I absolutely adore it. Like I'm gonna throw in some shots of me wearing it at the park, but I'm even gonna try this on like literally right now for you guys because it's just, it's too good. Like, oh my goodness guys, how good is this? It's just like so funky and so cool. I've been Recording this fabric for like the better part of the last like two years just waiting for that right project and I've come across different projects that I thought was gonna be it and I was like no that's not it and then I saw the no me 2001 pattern and I knew that that was it and I even have a good chunk of this left I think I have about a yard and a half of this fabric left so eventually when I get my life together I want to learn how to do some like lined like short trousers or like shorts that are like you know pleated trouser style or like maybe a mini skirt to match it but like how good is this and it is fully lined now I did fluff up on the lining on the bottom which you can't see the bottom extends and the center back about like this much past the lining so the linings here and then the bottoms there so if you're looking like if my legs are like open like that and you're looking in the back you can kind of see that the lining is a little bit short of the jacket but that doesn't bother me I can always go back and change out the lining but the base of the coat is just spectacular this pattern is a phenomenal pattern if you are thinking of putting together a jacket or you want to get into like coat making I would strongly recommend this I would venture to say that a beginner can do this because the video instructions are so clear and she walks you through each step so well the lapel was a little bit tricky for me that would be like you know we're getting into like advanced beginner technique but the coat in and of itself came together so easily I was stunned between start and finish the coat only took me about two days to make which is wild. It is so warm and it is absolutely perfect. All right, so we talked about high highs and low lows for February. This was a low low. So this is, um, I wanna say butter egg. I don't know, I'll put it up for you. But I remember when I was talking about this pattern in the video and I was like, guys, if you are thinking of like learning different fitting techniques, then you really need to get this pattern because it has so much like really specific fitting information. What I didn't realize <laughs> was that this is not just a dress pattern it is a shell pattern so the whole point of the pattern is that you get it and you work through these alterations and you fit it so that you have a perfectly fitted princess seam dress like as a base pattern that you can then do whatever you want with it I didn't realize that I thought it was just a regular dress pattern and so I went and sewed it up and the fit on this is horrific. I even did a sleeve hack and put these giant puffy sleeves on it. And it's just, it's too tight through my waist. It like bunches up back here on my bum. There's not enough room for the fabric to, nail, to lay nicely over my buns. This, the pattern is just bad. Also, the fabric is not helping the case. This was a thrifted um, Egyptian cotton bed sheet that now I wish I would have just put on my bed. <laughs> instead of turning it into this dress because the fabric isn't doing it any favors because it's kind of like shiny like that satiny it looks like I'm wearing an 80s prom dress when I have this on and it's just really not the look that we're going for so while the coat was a high high this was definitely a low low and a massive fail and I don't even know if it's worth donating I mean I'm sure it's, I mean it's it's well constructed like the invisible zipper, can we talk about this invisible zipper insertion? Like, listen, list that, that's good stuff right there. So it is well constructed. It just, it doesn't fit me at all. So I guess, I mean, I guess I'll donate it. Hopefully somebody out there wants it. I hate donating stuff that I feel like is just, uh, you know, uh, but I don't really know what else to do with this. Since we're talking about fails, we may as well just keep along those lines. So you, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know this year I'm trying to I'm trying to grow my skill set. I want to be a better seamstress. At the end of the year, I want to be able to look back at my skills and what I've produced and be like, well, Julie, you really did challenge yourself and up the ante. In the process of doing that, I must take on new projects. Hence, or insert this boiler suit pattern. 
This is a McCall's pattern. I talked about this in my February plans video. I had seen a few people on Instagram do boiler suits. I thought they were so cute. Wanted to dip my toe into that water. The water was icy cold, okay? It was not warm. It was not fit for swimming. <laughs> this is a hot stinking mess. I don't like this. It looks like a jail suit on the hanger and it doesn't look any better on me. The front of the fit is actually not horrible and the fit of the pants and the cut of the pants is actually not horrible. It's just the top half of this is so ill-fitted that I'm not even going to finish it. There's like a lot of bunching in the back that I'm getting. And it's just weird and I don't know how to fix it and I don't care to fix it. Um, This isn't even done. This is going to go into my scrap bin because I don't feel like doing the necessary things that I would need to do in order to go ahead and send this to the thrift store because I wouldn't send it to the thrift store like this. That's kind of reckless. So it's just going to live in my scrap bin until I muster up the want to to do the few necessary things that I need to do to get it ready for the thrift store. But this, this was a fail. This is just, this is not good. I'm not wearing it um, anywhere ever. All right, now back to a letter. More positive note are my two t-shirts. So this t-shirt was um, a conception of my So The Look video where I wanted to recreate an image that I had seen on Pinterest. And so I got this pattern. I actually have this pattern on my desk. It is um, Simplicity 9337. And I went ahead and I cropped it and I did a sleeve hack to give it a bell sleeve. And I am absolutely obsessed with this top. I have worn both of these a few times since that video, which literally just came out so that says a lot i have i have this thing where when i make a new thing it becomes like the only thing in my closet that i can think to wear is anybody else like that let me know in the comments below if you are like that like when you get something new it's like you forget that you have all of these other things and now in your mind when you go to get dressed that thing is the thing that you must wear so that has been the case with these two t-shirts. I really absolutely love this hack and I actually have one of these cut out right now on my ironing board where I took the long sleeve instead of having it so long I made it a three quarter sleeve so I'm going to try that out. This is definitely going to be my go-to pattern for t-shirts going for it because I feel like it's just so me. It's like basic but it's extra. I feel like I don't do basics but I can do basics that are ridiculously extra. <laughs> oh we are nearing the end. Okay. And then I have this skirt. This was the skirt that went with the So The Look outfit and this is a hack of the Simplicity pattern. Absolutely adore this skirt. I've had this skirt in my stash and I've liked it for a really long time. But when I sewed it initially, I did sew a size too small for me. This is another one of those weird skirts and this one goes in numbers. So it's like an 18 and then a 20. And the 18 is too small for me and the 20 is too large for me. But this time I was okay with taking the time to do the fitting as I went and get it to fit me perfectly and it absolutely does. I ended up having to take a lot out of the front panel and I slanted the front panel so you can't tell here but this has actually been folded over twice so I folded over as much as the pattern told me to fold it over initially and then I had to fold it again to take out like a large chunk of this section here to get it to fit me the way that I wanted it to fit me you know because like I said before it was just a little bit too big for me but it is absolute perfection. I am really on a denim kick as you can see right now. <laughs> I'm really feeling the denim this year and so I this is the second denim skirt that I've made not like this year I made a denim skirt I want to say in November of last year November of last year I think I made a denim skirt so this is the second one that I've made in a few months and I'm already thinking of a denim mini skirt in my near near future I absolutely love this I think no the Nomi pattern is like my favorite thing that I've made in the last two months but after the Nomi pattern is this skirt obsessed with this skirt and then really quickly I did some alterations so this used to be a dress I'm not going to talk too much about this because I have a whole video up on this even though I have a whole video up on a lot of that stuff that I talked about at length I'm tired of talking at this point so I have a whole video up on this so I'm not going to talk about it too much but these um this was a dress I separated the top I put a band or I separated the two pieces I put a band on the bodice and turned it into a shirt and then I put a waistband on the bottom half of it and turned it into a skirt now I have two separate pieces that I can wear and I can love because I wasn't wearing the dress after I did that I had this piece um that I also wasn't wearing this was attached to a dress 
And the way that the skirt was cut on the dress, it just, I realized now, was never going to be something that I was comfortable with. I don't like really fitted things on like my lower half. Like I like to have like my top half more fitted or more open and flowy. And then like usually on my lower, just something just not too like fitted and form, and form hugging. So I went ahead and I separated this and now it is just a cute little crop top, crop top with these long gorgeous sleeves. All right. And that is it for what I made this month. Thank you so much if you have stayed this far in the video. I really do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button as that does help me. And it helps other people find me here on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe. What are you waiting for? Like, I want you to stick around. You want to stick around, right? Stick around. Until next time, stay beautiful, make great things. I'll talk to you later. Bye.